folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. It's a beautiful day here in central Oklahoma. It got up to about 62 degrees today. Uh, the sun's uh, getting low over here in the west, so I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, we've had some crazy weather. So the last three weeks, it's been really, really dry, not much rain. Uh, and we hadn't got any rain quite a while before that, but it was really dry right in the middle of the nectar flow. So I was really concerned about that. But uh, last week we got us a really good rain here, got an inch and a half of rain. Also got some really severe weather, so had some hail. So yeah, big golf ball size hail. Uh, my wife, uh, she had some in her hand, man. There were there were some that were like bigger than than golf balls. It was like really big hail, and it went for about ten minutes. It just it seemed like an eternity. I was like, stop, and uh, it just kept coming. So uh, the roof on the house is fine. We had a roofer look at it. It's all good. So we've got uh, those class four shingles that are really good for impact resistance. And it's only a couple years old. So so the roof survived. Uh, we had my truck and the expedition outside and they got dinged up pretty good. So not sure what we're going to do about that. But uh, we did get some nice rain. Uh, three people were killed just to the north of us, about 10, 12 miles, a little community called Coal and uh, from tornadoes. So we actually jumped in the shelter for a bit because uh, uh, there was a tornado forming right over the house. The, the wall and the rotation was just right there and that formed over, it, it touched down once it got into Oklahoma City, tore a bunch of stuff up there and then a second storm came through and that one's the one that uh, went a little bit farther on a south track and was, was moving more easterly and hit that little town over there and killed those people. So sorry to hear about that about them. And uh, that's a tough hit for that little community. So yeah, man, that, that's really sad. Sorry to hear that. So it's been uh, three weeks, just over three weeks since we got into that uh, nuke and the hive next to it. That is the swarm hive, which it really wasn't a swarm. It was more of a cast swarm because of all the emergency queen cells in there and it was before swarm season really right now swarm season is is about right now we're coming into uh may and uh that's when we're really going to start seeing the swarms when the nectar flow gets really going good and uh, after a big rain is when it swarms so i was checking the trees when i came down here so those uh virgin queens that we saw last time should be mated now if they did get out and mate and come back successfully and if there were enough drones out there to mate with so that's the big question i've been keeping my eye on them i'm seeing some uh, activity coming and going but uh, that doesn't tell you everything so let's get in there and check those out and see if we got good mated queens okay here's our two hives this is the one that the swarm was in so we got some activity there, and this one here is looking pretty good too. It's slowing down a little bit because it's uh, it's in the evening, so there's not as many foragers out right now. I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of smoke. If this hive's doing real good, uh, we could expand it into a tin frame. But based on the amount of activity I've seen out front, I don't think it's going to be all that strong. Well, that doesn't look bad. Up there looks pretty good. In fact, there's a lot more there when I first pulled the lid off. That's a really good population from where they came from. That's looking very promising. Just some bees on here, an empty frame. But I would assume they're going to start putting some nectar in here. So we do need to pay pretty close attention to the amount of food stores they have. Just in case they're uh, low. 
these two frames are right up against each other. I need to fix that. You not have any B space there. A little bit of pollen here. Right here's pollen. So hopefully we see brood next to this and we got us a laying queen. And this is empty. So right now I'm concerned about uh, any nectar they have in here. This, this has some good weight to it. And we got us a brood pattern. This is all capped brood. So we do have a laying queen, which is awesome. Yeah, here she is right here. She's nice looking. Looks like she has made it good. She's not real tiny. That's awesome. Looking for some nectar on the outside of this. And I don't see any. If I remember right, I put a frame of honey in here. So this is all laid up as well. So not only is she laying, she's laying good. This is all capped. Same thing here. If we don't see some nectar on this next frame, we're going to need to feed these bees right here. And I'm not seeing any. Oh, there's a little bit right there. So there ought to be some over here too. Yeah, they do have a little bit on this outside frame. And none here. All that's uh, some old bee bread. So it's supposed to get down to uh, 39 degrees tonight. So I am not going to expand them tonight. But uh, tomorrow I will get down here, hopefully, and uh, I can expand this hive out and mark that queen. She'll be this year's queen. I think this year is red. So this frame right here, the spacer's broken off, so I need to move it out of here. Because there's no bee space between these two frames on this end. Okay, let's get into uh, hive 17 here. So we've got a honey super on this one. We can uh, take a quick peek at this super. See if they're up here covering it up any. So the population in this hive, you know, they had the brood break, so it's not going to be a lot. So not many bees up here at all. So we can use this super somewhere else if we need to. In fact, this hive might need to be reduced. But prior to it going queenless and then doing their super procedure or emergency queen it was a really strong hive so i see fairly decent amount of bees here and not so much over here so they're mainly there on the left side they're pretty calm so I'm not going to put any smoke on them from the top here. This is empty. 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 That's all drone comb. I'm going to put that on the outside. We got us some nectar right here. Good deal. It's a blank and empty. I'm going to put that on the outside. 
Here's another blank one. And they are drawing that out. Freshly waxed. I see a queen. But I don't see brood. So there's our queen right there. And she's running around on this frame that is mostly nectar. There may be some empty cells right in this area in the middle that maybe she's laid on. So right here in this space right here where there's not many bees, I blew on it, got them off there, there's eggs in there, right where she's at. So she is laying. So she just apparently started laying. That's a good thing. I was afraid she didn't get mated. She looks mated. They got this here ready for her to lay, but she's not laid any there yet. And this is all pollen and nectar. It's amazing the difference in those queens. How this one on in the uh, swarm, they're uh, kicking it in and she's laid up three frames worth. And this one's just getting started. Okay. No need to go into the bottom. I could see quite a few bees down there in the bottom. Well, let's, let's take a peek and see if we might need to reduce this. That actually doesn't look too bad at all. What we want to make sure of is there's coverage. If this bottom box was didn't have many bees in it, we'd be in trouble of uh, wax moth infestation or hot small high beetles taking over. Yeah, so we got decent coverage. Yeah, look at that. That's all uh, pollen. I wonder she may have laid down here. We just don't know it. she has so if you look right in here not a whole lot but there's some brood a little spotty she's a new queen getting going and they'll do that they won't lay a nice strong pattern but the one over here man she didn't miss a cell so yeah there's a nice brood pattern there So this hive is going to do good. Hopefully all those uh, young workers will be mature enough when the nectar flow really kicks in. Some of them will be in May. These capped ones will be. Oh yeah, look at that. She filled that up. So she started in the bottom. This hive is going to be strong before long. And another one full of capped brood. Perfect timing. This side too. Ain't nothing wrong with that queen. <laughs> Man, that's great. Two good queens bred that early in the year. They're a little grumpy. Okay, man, great news. Two good queens and we'll go in and we'll get these marked next time one thing i could have done additional on this hive here is if you notice how the the bees were all over on the right side i could have pulled a couple frames from the left and moved them over and centered them up 
so when they fill these with honey they'll fill them on out more uniform so probably when i come back and uh, try to mark her i'll uh, think about doing that so man that's great news so two good queens so that's one more hive that i don't have to uh, make a split with i'm going to be going through the rest of my hives hopefully this week uh, weather permitting checking these ones that uh, are really strong and checking for queen cells and uh, i'll be pulling splits on those and making some new so i've got uh, 11 hives to make up and uh, not counting this one to get back up to 30. so i lost about a third of my hives because uh, it was a prolonged cold uh, type of winter it, it didn't have uh, like a short period of real cold and then warm we had a one of those early and then then later on we had a longer period where it was cold for a long time so kind of a atypical winter for us that we didn't have a, a super super cold event like we did uh, two three years ago so that is it give me a thumbs up and uh, check back in and uh, hopefully i'll get some videos made uh, doing some splits here so like i said i've got uh, 10 hives to make up for and i've ordered six queens it'll be here mid-may uh, from Wildflower Meadows. I really like their uh, VSH Italian Queens. They're really good. And a lot of that genetics is in, in my hives here. But uh, that's, that's the end of the video. Give me a thumbs up if you would. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out. And I'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.